Hey guys, this is Dr. Cadell, and this experiment is determination of the mass percent sodium chloride using a standard curve. Now the idea behind this experiment is something that we use all the time in chemistry. Um, one of the, because one of, the, one of the important things that chemists do is if you bring me a sample of something, I don't know, your air, your water, your soil, anything, and we can analyze that and tell you not only what's in there, but how much is in there. So let's say you think there might be some lead in your water at home. So you bring me a sample of your water. I can analyze that and tell you first if there is lead and if so, how much there is. To do that, I use the exact same technique as we use in this experiment right here. And that is, we make a standard curve. But the idea is, you bring me your sample of water. I set it aside. I say, okay, you wanna know how much lead is in there? The first thing I do is I make up a series of what are called standards. These are solutions where I put the lead in so I know exactly how much lead is in each of those solutions. And then I pick something that I want to measure about those solutions that is related to how much lead is in there. In this experiment, what you're going to measure is, or be able to find, is the density of your solutions because what you're trying to find is the mass percent sodium chloride, and those two are related. They have a linear relationship. If I were determining how much lead is in your water, I might use something like the absorbance, um, using a, an atomic absorbance spectrophotometer. But it really doesn't matter. The idea is that we want a dependence of the variable on the property that we're looking for. So you bring in your sample, I make up a series of standards, and I put lead in each of these, and I know how much is in each of these. They're gonna be increasing amounts. And then I measure whatever property um, depends upon how much lead is in there. It'd be absorbance in the, the atomic absorbance spectrophotometer, um, whatever. Then what I do is I have a spreadsheet or, or a program that I have graph the dependent variable, which would be for me the absorbance, and this experiment would be the density on the y-axis versus the property that we're trying to determine, the, dependent, the independent variable, um, the concentration of lead or the mass percent sodium chloride. Um, and then I have my program, which is exactly what you guys are going to do, draw the best fit straight line, get the equation of that line. Knowing the equation of that line, which we'll talk about in just a minute, I can figure out how much lead is in your water, and you'll be able to determine the mass percent sodium chloride in your unknown solution. So, what we're going to look at today is um, the density and mass percent of sodium chloride in aqueous solutions of sodium chloride. So, um, just starting at the beginning, the basic is that we know that density is the mass over volume. Um, and so, what we're going to need to know, guys, is we're going to need to know the density and the mass percent sodium chloride of our five samples that we make up of some deionized water. Um, and then we're going to need to know the density of our unknown in order to calculate the mass percent sodium chloride in it. So, we're going to get the data that we need during the experiment to find the density of um, all, all of our knowns, our five samples, as well as water, and our unknown. And to do that, remember we need two things, the mass and the volume. Well, we're going to weigh them and we're going to measure the volume. Easy. You'll, you'll see how we do that. Now, mass percent, um, remember that's the mass of the um, solute divided by the mass of the solution times 100. In this case, the solute is sodium chloride. Um, we're going to measure um, how much sodium chloride there is, um, the mass of it. We're going to measure the mass of the solution, so that's going to be easy to get to. Um, now for the solution, the way we have it set up for this experiment, what we're going to do is we're going to measure out the sodium chloride by itself, um, and then we're going to add the water. Um, we're going to also measure the mass of the empty beaker, and then we're going to measure the mass of the beaker with the whole solution in there. So to get the mass of just the solution by itself, all we do is we take the mass of the beaker with the solution in it and subtract out the mass of the empty beaker. So um, that's you're going to see how we get all these numbers here in just a few minutes. But when we're doing our calculations, if we go over here, um, <clears throat> this is basically the graph that you're, you're, you're going to make. We're going to graph um, density versus mass percent. A couple things about this, guys. First is um, you're going to have six points on your graph. You're gonna need, you're, you will know, you'll be able to calculate the density of the five solutions that you make up, um, solutions one, two, three, four, and five, as well as that of deionized water. So remember, in deionized water, there is no sodium chloride, so the mass percent is zero, so that's gonna be right here. But the density is not zero, it's gonna be some number, so it's gonna be up here. Um, this will be the density mass percent of the other five solutions. The five solutions are real easy. 
basically we take in uh, five beakers, one, two, three, four, and five. In beaker one, we weigh out about one gram of sodium chloride. Beaker two, about two grams of sodium chloride, then three, four, and five. Um, dissolve it in some DI water, we're good. Now, when we, what you guys are gonna do is you're gonna have those numbers, that data, and you're going to use a spreadsheet, doesn't matter which one you use, to make this graph. Um, all spreadsheets can um, graph that data. They can also, you're gonna do this, um, draw the best fit straight line and give you the equation of that line. So what you can get when you do that is um, an equation that looks like this, except that um, M, which is the slope, is gonna be some number that your spreadsheet gives you, and D, which is the y-intercept, will also be just some number. Um, the way you use this is once you have this equation, you rearrange it like this, okay? because your goal is to find the mass percent sodium chloride in your unknown, which is X. X is the mass percent sodium chloride. Rearrange it like this. You'll have the y-intercept, B, and the slope, M, from your spreadsheet. You'll know what those numbers are. Um, you will know what the density of your unknown is because you're going to get the numbers you need for that. Plug that number in here. Solve for X. That's your goal. That's what you're trying to find. The mass percent sodium chloride in your unknown solution. All right, guys. So now that we see how we're going to find the mass percent sodium chloride in our solution, why don't we go over there and get started on the experiment? Here we go. All right, guys, so the first thing that we need to do is make up our series of standards. We're going to make up five standards, um, solutions one, two, three, four, and five. And we're also going to use deionized water as a standard, but we don't have to make that up. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our 30 milliliter beakers, um, label them one, two, three, four, and five, um, so we know which, which is which. Um, starting with beaker one, we're going to first, we need to know the mass of the empty beaker. So we make sure that the balance is zero. Place the empty beaker on there. Record that number in your data table. Three places past the decimal. Grams are the unit. Then, okay, now that we know that, we're going to tear out that beaker now that we got its mass. So now it says zero with the empty beaker on there. And in beaker one, we're going to put about one gram of sodium chloride. Beaker two, about two grams. And then three and three, four and four and five and five. Um, doesn't have to be exactly one gram, so it's, it's a waste of time to try to get exactly 1.000 grams. Just as long as you know how much it is, then it's, it's roughly in the neighborhood, will be good. So. And close enough. So we record that number in our data table. That's for beaker one. Then we do the same thing for beaker two. Weigh the empty beaker, add about two grams of, tear it, add about two grams of sodium chloride, then three, four, and five. Once we have that done, we're going to add, oh, about 25 milliliters of deionized water to each of the, 20, excuse me, 20 milliliters. It doesn't have to be exact. So I'm just gonna use the marks on this red, uh, beaker here to measure about 20 mils. Pour it in there. Let it dissolve, it takes a little while to dissolve. Um, I'm gonna set that aside. I've already made up the other solutions. While we're waiting for those to dissolve, we can go get our unknown. Um, as always, the unknown has an unknown number. So you take that off and you're going to make sure that you record that in your data table as well as your conclusion. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to measure the mass of a known volume of deionized water and then each of our five solutions. To do that, we're going to use, uh, once more, a 10 milliliter volumetric pipette, which means, guys, so in the density equation, mass over volume, the volume is always 10.00 milliliters for significant figures. So we'll start, we're going to um, start with the deionized water because, as always, we want to go from low concentration to high when we're using the same tool, the same volumetric pipette. So I'm going to take a weigh boat, place it on the balance, close the doors, tear it out. We don't care how much that weighs, we want to subtract it. So now it says zero with the weigh boat on there, take this out. Starting with the deionized water, just like we did with the last experiment, going to use volumetric pipette, pipette bowl, pipette 10 milliliters into the teared weigh boat. So you guys should already know how to use these, so I'm not going to demonstrate it again. Close the line.
here. And just to, re to remind you, um, we don't want to push this out with a bulb, let gravity pull it out. Um, touch the tip once it's all finished coming out to the side of the wayboat, and we're finished with the transfer. Close the doors, record that number um, in our data table. That's the mass of 10.00 milliliters of deionized water. Get that? Dump that out, and we want to dry out our, our wave boat, so we dry it out, and then we're ready for solution one. So we're going to do the same thing. Um, now, because there's still some deionized water in here, and that will dilute solution one, we want to rinse it with just a little bit of solution one. So I pull a little bit up, tilt it sideways, rotate it around and then dump it out into a waste beaker. So now, even though there's still solution in here, um, it's the same solution we're about to measure, so it's not going to change it. First thing I have to do is I have to tear the wave boat. Again, even though it's the same wave boat, um, you just want to be sure. So tear it out, bring it out, transfer 10 milliliters of the first solution. Same way. Record that mass, and then we just do the same thing for beaker two, three, four, and five. And the last thing, guys, that we need to do is do the same thing, but for our unknown solution. So to do that, we're going to use a fresh weigh boat and a fresh biometric pipette. Clean. So I have my unknown number here. I already took the unknown number off. Put it in my my lab. Put the clean weigh boat on the balance. Tear it out. Starting with a, with a clean biometric pipette, same thing. Put that on the balance, record that number, that's the mass of 10.00 milliliters of my unknown solution, and we're finished. That's all there is to the experiment.